Why can you remember some details of your worst day but not what you had for lunch yesterday? Scientists discovered that traumatic memories aren't just stronger, they're stored in a completely different system, one that never learned how to let go. This storage system was designed to save your life. Instead, it's destroying it. Think about this for a moment. The same brain that forgot your password from last week can perfectly preserve every detail of your most painful experience. This isn't an accident. Your brain has an ancient survival system that decides which memories deserve permanent storage. For most experiences, it chooses wisely, but trauma triggers something different entirely. Your amygdala, your brain's alarm system, goes into overdrive. It was designed to save your life by making sure you never forget danger. The problem? It can't tell when the danger is over, so it keeps you trapped in a state of constant alert, even when you're completely safe. To understand how this prison was built, we need to see how your brain normally handles memories. Something incredible happens in your brain every time you face a stressful situation. Three specialized regions work together to decide whether you survive the experience or get trapped by it. Your amygdala immediately scans for emotional threats and danger signals. Your hippocampus acts like a meticulous librarian, organizing each experience with precise timing and context. Your prefrontal cortex serves as the rational manager, deciding whether you're still in danger or if it's safe to file the memory away. Think about the first time you gave a presentation and felt nervous beforehand. Your amygdala flagged the social threat. Your hippocampus recorded the sequence, walking to the podium, starting to speak, noticing people's reactions. Your prefrontal cortex eventually concluded, that was stressful, but I survived and even did well. Now, when you think about that presentation, you remember feeling nervous, but you don't become nervous again. Your brain successfully converted a threat response into a completed experience. The memory knows it's in the past because your prefrontal cortex stamped it as resolved. But when trauma overwhelms this system, something catastrophic happens. The moment your brain detects life threat, deep structures trigger the HPA axis, your ultimate alarm system. Within milliseconds, stress hormones like norepinephrine and cortisol flood your brain in a chemical storm. Here's where everything goes catastrophically wrong. Your amygdala seizes absolute control and locks out the other systems entirely. Your hippocampus, the storyteller that normally organizes memories with perfect timing and context, becomes overwhelmed by stress hormones and can't function. Your prefrontal cortex, your rational manager, becomes powerless to intervene. This creates a filing disaster. The trauma gets stored without timestamps or narrative structure. Your brain literally splits the experience into two separate filing cabinets. The facts you can discuss and the raw emotions that can detonate without warning. Instead of one coherent memory, trauma shatters into scattered sensory fragments. Sounds, smells, images, body sensations. These fragments exist outside of time, which is why flashbacks feel completely real. This means any fragment can instantly bring you back to that moment. You might be peacefully drinking coffee years later when someone slams a door behind you. That sound fragment instantly activates your entire trauma response. Your body floods with the same terror, the same desperate need to survive. You know intellectually you're safe, but your nervous system experiences the original moment all over again. But trauma doesn't just hijack your brain. It takes control of something even more fundamental. Your body becomes a biological vault, storing memories in your nervous system, your muscles, even your organs. Your nervous system can't tell the difference between past and present danger. It remains locked in survival mode, constantly scanning the horizon for threats that no longer exist. This isn't just psychology. It's measurable physiology. Your muscles hold tension patterns from moments of terror, your connective tissue literally hardens around traumatic experiences. You're living with a memory system that exists without a story. Sensory fragments your mind can't access, but your body never forgets. 
and this creates a dual storage system that operates 24-7 because your body can be triggered by memories your conscious mind has no control over. So what does this all mean? It means the flashbacks, the racing heart, the sleepless nights aren't symptoms of weakness. They're signs of a brain system doing exactly what it was designed to do. Every crazy reaction you have makes perfect neurobiological sense. Now you know why trauma feels different, because it is different. But here's the most hopeful part. Your brain's incredible ability to rewire itself in response to trauma is the same ability that can help it heal.